So move on to the next topic, which is around uh, caller location, a topic, a hot topic. A topic was debated uh, ad nauseum uh, this morning. Um, and as we heard uh, this morning, there are effectively uh, a single type of implementation for caller location in Europe from mobiles, which is from uh, the cell, from the cell ID. Uh, the mobile phone actually is nearly as old as I am. It's 40 years old. Uh, it was 40 years old last week, I think. Uh, so it's been around for a while. Um, and the directive, as we also heard this morning, uh, states that the competent regulatory authorities, in some cases the NRAs, not always, uh, should lay down the criteria for uh, accuracy and reliability. Um, at this moment in time, uh, no member state has taken that step uh, to define accuracy. Uh, and the European Commission has the ability to take um, implementing measures um, uh, in terms of those uh, steps that the NRA should make. At this moment in time, that hasn't been uh, done either. But Paolo, if, if I may say, you have taken a very good first step uh, with, with, with your own work. Um, and from your perspective uh, as, uh, as a regulator, adopting the uh, strict uh, words of, of the directive, um, do you think that uh, the steps that you have taken and need to take even more are clear enough? are clear enough for 27 different uh, ways of doing it. And I think we want uh, a, a unique uh, uh, service in Europe. If we believe that there, is, there are uh, European citizens with the right to have the, the same service w where they are. So, uh, as the things uh, are, um, as I said before, we will have 27 different uh, uh, criteria. And just staying with you for a second, you mentioned at the uh, expert group on emergency access meeting back in November of last year for action related to a uniformed uh, type of approach. Um, I mean, since then and now, is that gap any closer in terms of providing a uniform approach? No, nothing happens until now, okay. as far as I know. Sure. Uh, Gula, I'll turn to you at this point. Um, the words we hear from the PSAP operators and so on is that they need caller location. Uh, the regulators are saying, uh, some of the regulators are saying, some of the member states are saying that uh, we need to have direction uh, from the European Commission, not to have the uh, patchwork quilt of, of 27 solutions. And I'm sure Laszlo's members inside each of those uh, member states don't want to have uh, repeat type uh, uh, implementations done by regulators. So from the European Commission's perspective, um, what are the next steps in terms of providing those necessary guidance and, and, and the, the uh, implementation of the directive? Well, first of all, I would, I would uh, re repeat again that the primary responsibility is of the member states to, to implement call allocation criteria. Uh, uh, so, uh, from my perspective, uh, Paolo, you didn't really respond uh, to Tony when he asked you what steps were made in Portugal in uh, this respect. And um, we can see we, we are trying to, uh, we tried in different fora in the uh, expert group of uh, emergency uh, uh, access and also in, in uh, the COCOM uh, at higher level group of uh, 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 communication committee of the commission to, to call on member states to step up their efforts. Um, and why do we do this and why, why is this really important uh, in order to, to start our work uh, to, to, to issue uh, guidelines? Uh, we need the data from uh, member states. We, we need the data from your PSAPs. We cannot, uh, we, we want to make an um, informed decision, uh, evidence-based decision. We need to have your PSAPs uh, needs clearly set out. Uh, needs related to, co uh, needs in uh, conjunction with, with costs. 
and uh, this is the data which, which we, we are lacking. Uh, what we did, um, and frankly, I had just a second. Keep going. I had I had this frustration in EGIA, uh, all all regulators coming uh, to the Commission, asking the Commission to 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 step up its effort, while uh, member states didn't do uh, so-called their homework. Uh, what we did is uh, we turned to uh, ECC. Uh, the European Communications Committee, uh, who set up, uh, and uh, Florin can confirm this, set up a working uh, project team uh, on uh, uh, call allocation accuracy. Uh, uh, this project team ha has its uh, as aim uh, to to uh, issue recommendations on uh, call allocation accuracy and reliability. And, and uh, the Commission very much support this. I can confirm that there is a political support to this work. And based on that, we can, we yep. can go uh, in the direction of... Sure. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry for cutting across here. I just want to keep the debate going and keep, keep, time, uh, keep to the time. Uh, so from, from where I'm sitting, uh, I hear the regulators, uh, competent authorities saying we need directive, uh, directions from the Commission. Commissioner saying it's the member state issue, uh, so it's it's 15 all. Um, and when I hear then things like uh, political support, and you reminded me of it, um, there was a letter written uh, by Vice President Cruz when she said, in response to a previous communication, that recognising that the Commission does have the ability to take te technical implementing measures and agreeing that the directive was stronger than previous, for sure, major steps forward, and that the laying down of accuracy requirements is something that the Commission could do. So I guess the, the question for me, and maybe for some people in the audience, is which is it? Because, on, because the vacuum is creating issues. We heard some of them in the last few days. The vacuum is creating problems and uncertainty, perhaps even for some of, of, of Laszlo's members. They don't know which way to turn. So is there any words that you can provide that give people in the room that meaningful uh, commitment or a meaningful signal that where we're going is the right direction? I was under the impression that I just uh, said that this, this working group in the ECC, uh, which received a clear mandate of, uh, of uh, coming up with uh, recommendations, uh, would would work on on uh, mapping up the solution also uh, as I understood, but maybe Florin could uh, okay. explain that. So, uh, so it's technical uh, implementing measures. Piloting. Yeah. So it's 2015. Uh, Florin, your serve. Uh, ECC has got the mandate now to uh, come up with the recommendations for for uh, for implementation. So. Is it a forearm smash back, or is it a backhand, or what, what's the return? What's the return shot? Well, as I mentioned in my presentation earlier today, um, ECC, which is uh, uh, an organization uh, composed of in majority of the regulators. How many uh, regulators are in the group? In uh, EGNAN or in yeah, ECC? in the working group, in the working group. In ECC, is virtually all, all 52 or 55 European countries are represented. And working in the group itself? And in the group, in the VGNAN, uh, it's less, I'm, I'm not, I don't have a clear figure because we are working on several PTs, project teams. But to do with uh, color location in particular, how, how many regulators are involved in that uh, active working group? One. Well, Sorry, Paolo. We are. You are okay. Well, they are. They are so. <laughs> the, uh, the Portuguese regulator is also involved. Uh, we, we are involved. Um, we have uh, worked together also with uh, German regulator, uh, Swiss okay. regulator, okay. and uh, we are uh, actually uh, trying to get even more people involved. Okay. Could the people in this room get involved? If uh, they are working for the organization that is uh, going to decide those criteria, yes. 
Sure. But only, so only the competent uh, authorities are the ones who are inside debating uh, the recommendations. Yeah. The idea is that uh, uh, ECC is, uh, as I said, is working as a regulator organization. Okay. But uh, nevertheless, as I uh, also uh, mentioned in, in my slides, we are going to uh, discuss with all the stakeholders because it's right to do so. Sure. Peace up operators, uh, 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 service providers, and uh, um, solution manufacturers. OK, which is people in the room, I guess. Yes. Yeah. We are going to talk with them. Sure. Laszlo, if I turn to, to you, sorry, I'll pass over the microphone. Um, so from your perspective, uh, I could think you could be forgiven if you're a little bit unsure of where it's going. Um, but from your own perspective and your members' perspective, uh, what are they saying uh, in relation to location at 112? Is it, is it on the agenda? Uh, and are they feeling any pressure from their customers uh, in terms of potential liabilities of not providing uh, meaningful location information? Yeah, I mean, uh, <coughs> Maybe not, not uh, from the uh, uh, from the customers' uh, reactions, but uh, but we feel that the uh, maybe additional point that the, the smartphones and the mobile apps are underutilized in in, in this uh, area. So it cannot be overlooked that the location technologies are, are currently used in in thousands of applications, and uh, a significant and growing number of European citizens uh, use. Um, uh, location technologies to uh, enabling people to find ATMs, cafes, restaurants. So yep. uh, it should be also used to have uh, safe uh, lives. And um, and secondly, what I think that all, all we think all players in the value chain, the service chain, should take uh, should be ready to take responsibility. Uh, uh, and the, uh, for example, in, in terms of the caller location, we also think it's important that the PSAPs are, are equipped for processing uh, uh, the data transmitted. Yeah, which, and, mo and most of them are. Well, we, well, you know, as coming back to, for example, the eco, which is uh, the caller location is, is included in the eco regulation, and and we uh, we mobile operators have problems receiving the uh, the routing information and the uh, for member states identifying the PSAPs capable processing uh, that kind of data. Uh, but anyway, what my, my main message is that it's, it, it's uh, uh, all, all players should be involved and, mm. and, and all, players should, all players should take responsibility and the part yeah. of... of uh, so, so would it be worthwhile then your association joining the ECC working group to push things along? And have you been in contact? No? Okay. Yeah, I, yeah I'm, we, I don't know. What, I mean, I'm not uh, very familiar with the with the ECC uh, uh, rules and, and how it works. But of course, uh, offline we can. Uh, yeah, I think uh, it just it just works. Explore a bit on that. Yeah, no, and I I think that's a really uh, important point about about uh, making contact and, and uh, providing that uh, willingness to participate. And it's really really important. I think that that happens. Uh, a little bit surprised, maybe it hasn't happened by now, uh, but maybe we can continue that in, in another day. Paolo, you want to add something to that? Yes, uh, Julia uh, was talking about recommendations. Uh, uh, just regarding, for instance, ECOL, uh, Portugal has already said that the recommendation is not enough. Uh, and he is a lawyer, so he understands, because the problem is our lawyers does not accept a recommendation. So. We need more than recommendations. Okay. And I would like to uh, add another thing. We are the only country in Europe with a regulation on uh, E112. And there is very specifically said that uh, localization for fixed uh, telephony is 100% with address. And for mobile, we have several uh, criteria already laid down uh, since two, uh, 2009. To take another step ahead, we need things very, very, very clear. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, okay 30 all. Uh, Raid, uh, to represent, um, if you could take on the, the, the responsibility of speaking for end users, practitioners, PSAPs, uh, ambulance services, hospitals, you know, those who precisely will get the end product, which is the customer who needs assistance. What do you think and what do you he hear around the table here that gives you any confidence that things are going to get better? 
I think that we are in a debate more of a political, and of course, each company, each part has their own interest in this debate, but I don't know if the real interest of the person we want to rescue is represented very well. So uh, from my point of view, I think that from the questions that you have had here, this, is, this should not be the issue of uh, state members as a standalone. It is not a local issue. This is even not a European issue. It is, it, it is moving towards a global issue, that we need global standards. And if we look now at the single emergency numbers that are being used in the world, Maybe the most known are the 911 and the 112, but the 911 now is being used in the Middle East more and more. Jordan implemented the 911 recently, and there are other countries that are implementing the 911, which means that the standards, whether it is 112 or it is 911 or it is whatever, we need to be speaking the same language. We look at cross-border issues even within Europe, and if we don't have the same standard within Europe, to be able to cooperate on cross-border issues, cross-border interventions, the PSAPs that are on the borders frequently get calls from the other side. And they need to know how to behave, how to, they need to have the same standards to be able to interpret the things in the same way and to get the same information. So I think that the future is to look at what we need on the ground and then to decide how you give us what we need. I'm sure that there are a lot of opinions, a lot of resistance and so on to do certain things. For example, accuracy on localiza localization. We will need as much as accurate positions, especially in rescue operations. We're not talking necessarily about urban areas in this moment as much as on rural areas, mountains and so on. So if somebody is calling, you need to know where they are exactly. It doesn't, it is not sufficient to give you just, uh, you know, a general area where you tell you go and search, which may take you hours to search there until the person dies. Yeah. So I think this is my point of view. Sure. I'll take a question from the floor in, in just a minute, if there, if there is one. Uh, but John, um, the role that BT plays uh, in the UK uh, and in Ireland as well in terms of being the stage one uh, PSAP provider, um, you're at the, front, at the front end, the front line. Um, do you believe that uh, the changes that are needed to bring things forward are going to happen anytime soon? And the second question is, um, do you think that PSAPs need a major upgrade to accept better information, or is it an incremental effort, not much investment needed to make uh, themselves accept whatever data, whatever information is going to come from uh, enhanced caller location? I grab the microphone there, sorry. I think I was very encouraged to hear that the ECC is going to do some work on this because I think there are, this is a partnership and um, the telecom side of the community has to do something. Um, I think the, uh, and I think the telecoms community already knows what it can do. Um, we know the, tele the location technologies that can help. I think what would really help the process and move things forward quickly would be that member states also have to, uh, and the PSATs within the member states, can provide very useful ammunition very quickly to give hard evidence to drive the whole process forward. And I, what I mean by that is to give um, verifiable, quantifiable statistics that say that if we have the location uh, as soon as the call arrives, and we have a very precise location, as soon as the call arrives, it can save a minute for 50% of the calls or two minutes for 60% of the calls, and we will save uh, hours or weeks of time searching. This will save an incredible amount of money. If that information is available, I think it should be uh, made more widely available, because I think that pushes, certainly in the UK government, the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of the Interior, the Home Office, they need to take a lead and to push and work with the telecoms ministers to say, we need this for our citizens' safety. And I think it can, the whole process now could move quickly yeah. if that information is there. Available. 
Do you want to jump in there? And I'll take a yes. question from the floor if anybody wants to raise I, I think I think we're going too far. We don't need to prove what is very logical and which is very common sense. If we want to prove what is common sense and wait another two years to collect information on this, we know that if we get the position, it will help us to get faster to the person, especially if it is a rescue operation and so on for the fire department, for the air rescue, for everyone. So I think, in my opinion, that we have sufficient ground to push and to say we need these things as fast as possible. And I would suggest that in the ECC meetings and so on, there should be involved maybe part of the providers or at least representatives of the providers. I've, I don't know if they are involved, emergency services, PSAPs, to say their opinion and what they really need on this. Because this is where really the things and the ideas are coming from, that this is what they need to get to their patients or to, to their you know, citizens as fast as possible. Okay. Thank you, Ray. Question? Uh, a very quick comment. Uh, I Dimitri. think we heard, uh, I don't really need a microphone, I'll do it the less technological way. Okay. Um, nevertheless, I think just to add to that, we heard evidence from two people in these two days, and it was two different people. It was Anna Bagenholm. And she said, location counts. And then we heard from Susie Brand. And she said, if something I wanted to change, that would be you know, location. So we don't really need any evidence. It's there. Hannes, question? Um, do you have any ideas on how to increase the transparency of the process, specifically with the ECC? I, it looks a little bit like uh, working in a, in a, in a uh, side room and, and deciding about those things. Specifically, when you talk about technology, look at, uh, as, you, as you elaborated on today, looking into different technology, I think there would be a lot of uh, value in making some of, reaching out to some of the players in the field and making sort of uh, the conversations are uh, public, so we can actually then later on figure out why certain decisions had been made. Transparency is a, is a key concept in many of those uh, um, discussions. Thank you, Hannes. Do you want to respond, Florent? I know you're watching the time as well. Uh, yes. Okay, okay. I'll take this one. Sure, thanks. Um, sure, um, the idea is that uh, we have to go back again to the directives. So it's, uh, if, you, if we are talking about obligations to lay down criteria, these are the obligations of the member states. What we are trying to do in ECC is uh, uh, to uh, help member states uh, derive their, their own criteria. And uh, the, the whole issue started because some, some, uh, some of the member states felt the need uh, to have some, some sort of uh, uh, cooperation and uh, to have a uh, cross-border uh, discussions and uh, establish common things. So uh, again, if you uh, if you are if we are going down to the who is going to establish this is is the 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 authority in that in uh, in that specific country. I mean, uh, uh, I, I would say that uh, the focus for transparency uh, should come from this. From what the 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 member state is uh, is going to apply. To Thank you. Sorry, just just one question, and then we'll we'll wrap it up. Bruno, question here at the front. Is it microphone? Oh, sorry, you have one here. I beg your pardon, Bruno. We go to you afterwards. Okay. Uh, hello, Jan Strache, I'm from Latvia. I have the following question about uh, color location. Yeah. Uh, the EU has a lot of power to force uh, network companies to in make them invest in technologies that would help everybody to make color location better and more reliable. Why EU is uh, lacking to do so? It has a lot of uh, political, economical, and other power, but it uh, doesn't, uh, EU doesn't, don't use that too much. Why? Thank you. I'll let you respond in just a second, Gula. Uh, Bruno, here at the front, if you don't mind. Thank you very much. My question was just like about deadlines, and uh, of course the, the result of the game I think is 30-30. So basically, I think we're not moving again. Uh, we, I was there last year. I'm here this year, and nothing has changed. So, do you guys have any clue on when things might be changing? Good question. Do you want to answer the first point and the second point? Yes. Um, well. 
Well, we, we read out uh, exactly how much uh, power the EU have uh, has. Uh, it's not about a lot of power or uh, too little, but uh, we, we, we can step up and uh, we do step up uh, uh, when, when we see that the emergency services are not efficient. The, the, this is what uh, the, uh, we are mandated by the, the uh, Universal Service Directive. And it's clear that, that, that uh, since member states didn't do any step forward for a more efficient call allocation, uh, now we are also supporting and pushing uh, the ECC group to, to come up with the re recommendation. And uh, we will, uh, we will uh, subscribe to it. And uh, this would be an important step towards uh, harmonized uh, uh, mandatory requirement. And the second part, the question about timing, I'll let you answer the floor as well. Have, have we any indication of timing? Uh, we we are pushing um, this work, and uh, we would not like to, to uh, uh, get in the situation that uh, what we heard the first day, uh, it would worse to uh, break into a cart in order to get uh, better accurate uh, core location. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very good Thank point. You. And, and uh, Florin, maybe if you could just answer before you go. I'm sorry for keeping you longer than you expected, but maybe Bruno's question. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Um, as I was uh, also uh, presenting in uh, the slides uh, earlier before uh, ECC, uh, uh, the, the group inside ECC is planning to to uh, uh, complete this, its work uh, by the end of this year. So we are not uh, running away from, from it. Uh, we are trying to address this, the subject. Uh, and uh, I would ask again uh, that you in uh, your uh, own uh, member state uh, go to uh, the, uh, the regulator or the authority involved with this and ask them also to, to join or to participate and uh, to have conclusion on this. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, for, Thank thanks you. and safe journey back. Thank you. Um, OK, John, I'm going to give you the last word. Uh, did you, sorry, did you want to say something? Um, or maybe you've forgotten. Yes. OK, no, no, I, I was going to come to you if you want to wrap it up. Um, OK, Bob. <laughs> OK, after, after John, come to you, and then we'll finish. OK, go ahead, John. Did you want to say something? I, I, I just thought it was worth returning to the point about evidence, if you don't mind, because I think uh, we all know, everyone in this room knows from common sense that it is quicker, if you can be quicker to a, and get, have a more precise location and get to an event, you can save more lives. I think we've been at that stage though for 10 years and, and I think what's certainly needed in UK government circles is for the business case to be made. And that sounds awful when you're talking about saving lives, but nevertheless, if it is known that you can save millions of pounds for the emergency services by being able to get to incidents quicker and not spend hours searching for people to handle every call more quickly. That helps make the case. And I think that's what's, that would help move things forward. Should, the information should be there, and that is what would change the situation we've been in, the stalemate we've been in for 10 years. Um, we've been in this, we all know it will help, but we can't seem to move it. <laughs> yeah, any further, yeah. Just, just one, yeah. Just one second, Sebastian. Uh, Bob, I'm gonna let you answer or ask a question. I will go to you then, Sebastian, and then I'm going to have to move on to the next topic. So, um, so, and if anybody wants to follow up afterwards, then please do. So, Bob. Mobile network operators, they stop at the border. They are international. And we would like to do a small polling into this uh, room, see if there are representatives of the PSEPs that think that European Commission is doing enough. So, please, are that people in this room that think that the European Commission is doing enough for this issue? Or do you believe that they don't do enough? Who thinks they do enough? <laughs> right. So, yeah. So it's 40-30, I think, is it? Okay. May, may, I, may I continue on what John said? Do you want to be in a position that uh, you spend so much money on a uh, uh, such an accurate uh, caller location that you would not have the money to buy the uh, ambulance to get to the caller. This, this is the well. 
Uh, let, let's uh, try that, that, that is why we need the cost-benefit analysis and make an informed decision. And this is what we lack. This is what we need from member states. So very, very quickly, this is the last that, point. Very I quickly. Just going to give a response. Yeah, two, two study was made. One, I mean, the COCOM provided the, the, the information that 400 million uh, emergency calls are done every year. Out of those 400 million, 20 million are a uh, waste of time. I mean, we are wasting a lot of time because of lack of accuracy. Another study from Sweden, who was made in 2007 or 8, provided some information about the cost saving. It's uh, around 1,200 euros per minute saved. So you can easily make the calculation. And this was, done, this was um, explained this morning by Christina, saying that uh, it was for just one minute, 26 billion euros f for Europe per year. 26 billion, I mean, uh, we can do it in gold. Okay. Uh, we I'm can provide any solution for that. I'm going we to wrap it up. Any solution. I'm going to wrap it up because we do have two other subjects to cover. And uh, Sorry, I beg your pardon. Richard, did you want to ask a question? London Ambulance Service. Um, I'll, I'll pray the uh, control on the London Ambulance Service. Um, ju just give you some evidence if you really want it, is that um, we have an automated dispatch system. So the first thing we ask the caller is, what's wrong? If they say they have chest pains, it triggers an automatic response. I had to turn it off for mobile phones. It was too inaccurate. Um, we were able to send an ambulance within 20 seconds of the call starting to somebody in cardiac arrest. For a, mo for a mobile phone, it's about two to two and a half minutes because we cannot tie the location down in a dense area like London. I don't know how much more evidence you need than that. Okay, thank you, Richard. I think it's safe to say that we could have had a, a one-hour debate on this particular topic and probably still not finish. Uh, but it also probably serves to prove that this is probably the hottest topic uh, that the whole chain is facing. And uh, I think just to summarize, we definitely need to see some action. We definitely need to see some improvements, and timing uh, is the essence here. Uh, it it's, needs to happen right now.